because you motivated me. There was that that there was this video that you posted where you were like flipping on a on a towel with a dog, and yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I'm Olympian." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Wow." Um, here I am, like, you know, struggling to just like do a couple push ups in my house. Like, there's no, I'm not trying to be on a beam or a, or one of those, the swingy thing. Like, I'm not doing any of that. And I was so inspired by you. And, and it's funny because it's like some days I wake up and I feel like I can take on the world. I feel like I can do anything. And other days mm. I barely can wake up. And if I brush my teeth yeah. and wash my face that day, like, then I feel like I can accomplish that's a full on success. I feel right. That. <laughs> so where are you yeah, right now? Yeah. Um, you said you're on the East Coast. I'm on the East Coast. I'm currently in New Jersey with my family. Um, I I'm in my room right now, which is like odd because when you leave home and you live somewhere else and then you come back into your childhood home, it's, it's like it's a little weird, you yeah. know, it's a little weird, but it's been awesome. And being with my family has been so great because everybody still lives in New Jersey. I'm the only one who's really far out of state and not just out of state. Like I'm across the country. I went to California. So it's like, you know, in the midst of all of this, I got to steal a lot of time with everybody, which I definitely wouldn't have gotten before. When's the last time that you were home for this long? Um, the last time that I was home for this long was probably like mid to late 2018 wow i think this is a very long wow. time i mean it's crazy yeah, but i love no, it I, I'm, well, I'm the thing is, it's like this time is full of a lot of uncertainty but it's also yeah. it's also yeah. had some gifts inside of it you know there's been like we've got absolutely to kind of see that the whole world can actually change on a dime and that can be really challenging, but it can also have some of the benefits like getting to spend time with your family. Yeah. I mean, I know that, um, cause as you know, like the Olympics was supposed to be this year. Yeah. Um, and they ended up postponing it until next year. But of course, when it's the games, when it's something as big as that you're hustling and the goal is to peak at the right time. So we were just like going, 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 going. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, no more practice. Like it's yeah, like what, what it's was round upon like it's like literally a misdemeanor if you go somewhere else. Like I said, what was sorry, that what was moment that? like for you? Like that like when you kind of like did it sort of happen gradually where it kind of unfolded or like did it just hit you all at once? So I mean, here's my thing, because we were, you know, I think especially like the United States Olympic Committee and the Olympic Committee in general, I think they were doing their best to try and get everybody's input. So um, a couple of days before they made the announcement, they had a Zoom call. They brought in 300 plus athletes. That way they could hear all of our concerns. And like they put us into four separate chat rooms and basically were like, OK, tell us what you're thinking about, which is like I had never been a part of something like yeah. that before. And at first it was kind of scary because you know, sharing your concerns about something so big feels odd because you know, obviously, of course, there's going to be someone with opposing ideas. Like, my point of view is like, okay, I don't know how long the postponement should or would be, but also keeping the games at the same time would be tough because there are, there are athletes in the U.S. who can't train in, at the time, including myself, and then there are athletes who still could. And then you have athletes across the world who their countries are shut down in quarantine. They can't train, but we can that's not fair. It's not a fair game. So there were a lot of different, I guess, things like that, that I was thinking of. And also it was just, it was a lot. So I had expressed that and somebody else uh, was kind of like, no, we should keep the games. Like the games is, um, that's going to be everybody's source of light and positivity. You have people from all over the world coming right. together for something that they're passionate about. Why would you want to postpone that? Why would you? And so like, there's a lot of different point of views. All of them made sense, but a lot of it, like, if I had shared something, it was really comforting to hear other athletes be like, yeah, you know, I'm really anxious about not knowing either. And then all of a sudden it turned into like me connecting with other athletes and sharing like, hey, I'm scared. They're like, yeah, I'm scared too. And I made a lot of friends on that Zoom call from different sports that I didn't know before because we literally bonded over sharing what we were yeah. worried about. So a couple of days later, the news comes in, they released that the Olympics is going to be postponed. And even though that's what I had wanted just in the sense of like we have no idea what's happening right. why keep it if 
we keep training. Right. <laughs> um, it was still, you know, like getting hit in the face with a pan. You get the rug swept out of you because um, a year is a pretty long time. And it's just, I need time to adapt to change. And that's a very, Abrupt. very big change. Yeah. <laughs> Abrupt change is a good word for it. And it's like we were going, going, all this energy, meal prepping, like everything gears to that moment. And then it was like, okay, that's actually not going to happen this year. And it was kind of like, oh, wait, you mean I have to gear up and, and take this pressure and the stress and do it again next year? It's, it was a lot. So I definitely was a little bit emotional about it. But at the end of the day, like, I think everybody can agree the world comes first and and i i agree with it i understand it it's still just it was a tough thing to get used to but i i get it so yeah that was a long one sorry yeah, but <laughs> yeah no it's 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 so interesting lori like i feel you you know like and and i i like like my heart aches because it is it is such a <laughs> such a monumental time it's it's a time where the world really does come together and it's it's really rallying in many ways around young people and like that being like a beacon yeah. of hope for the world and and so it's powerful and and emotional and i feel like we should feel emotional about it um yeah. and, yeah. and you know it, it brings up something really important which is like the, the this is what you were doing with your day your time your energy like how what did training look like i mean i went back on your feed and just like six weeks ago Ooh. you were like flipping around <laughs> We were, we were going like at going it. I mean, so it was hard. it was about to be meat season. Yeah, it was about to be meat season. So we were just piecing routines together and trying to. I mean, these are the routines that I was supposed to compete at the Olympics, right? We were, and tell us because I'm sure a lot of people here, you know, are are not Olympic athletes. You know, like present company excluded. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, no. But a lot of people may not understand. Like, what does your day look like when you're training? Like, what? Like, what time do you wake yeah. up? Like, what, what does that even entail? So, luckily for me, my coaches don't really like morning workouts. And I have become a night owl since moving to California. Now I kind of like sleeping in a little bit. <laughs> um, so, the schedule works in my favor. In the mornings, usually I would go to physical therapy first. And I would do that two or three times a week. If I didn't have physical therapy, then it was some sort of like cycling, boxing, or some days I was just tired and I didn't want to work out and that was fine. So I would take the morning off. Um, but every day it was consistent that practice would start at two and end around 6.37ish. But what's really neat about um, our workouts is that if you get your assignment done fast enough, you can go home early. If you don't get your assignments done fast enough, then there there's no judgment and no shame in you needed to, needing to like take more mm -hmm. time, which is nice. So they don't have a like cut set time frame because also like me and my teammates agree. Um, if you stand there waiting for the clock to tick six thirty and you're ready to go home, you're not going to be productive right. doing that. So it's. I'm doing actually less hours than I was doing before, but somehow getting a lot more done because like, I'm not waiting for the clock to end. I, I want to be there. So that's about five days a week. And then Saturday, it's, it's an easier day for us. And then but we have it is six days off. a week. It is six days a week. Yeah. Wow. And now I know, you know, I'm sure it took a minute to kind of, for everyone to rally once, you realize that it was going to be postponed to next year. Yeah. Um, how does that change your training schedule? Like, are, do you go into like, be here this time next year? Or yeah. like, do you, do you get to like relax? I don't, you know, how does that work? Yeah. So basically if, if the world wasn't on fire, but the Olympics was still postponed, we would still be in the in the gym doing like maintenance routines. So basically, they at least for us, every athlete is different. Every sure. gym is different. I only speak sure. for me. But um, at our gym, they would have us do basic routines where the start value would be a lot lower and it's more for cardio just to make sure you're
exercise routines together and you can do them all in one go, then you start running those over and over again. So that way, when you're out there, you don't have to worry about endurance. The only thing you're worried about is like, I need to hit. What am I going to think about? And, and they kind of teach you through training it that like falling is not an option you're just banking on hitting it's more of how well can you hit which makes things i find that comforting i used to find that really yeah. stressful because like, oh, i don't have the option to fall but it's also it's a, you're like what did i do what did i do um but then it's kind of like ominous positivity yeah. at least that's how i was saying it was like you're not going to fall. It's just not going to happen. It's not in the cards for you. All you have to focus on is how well you're going to hit. And that actually took off a lot of pressure. So that's the mindset that wow. we keep when we're training. What, how much do I have to train until I can get to the point where I'm not worried about falling anymore? I'm worried about where my feet together. How is the execution? Does it look pretty? Oh, Am I finishing? Like, especially on bars, like are my, all my pure close to the bar because right. that's also a deduction if you're too far away and it scares the judges that's probably a deduction yeah. so it's like it's tweaking all the little things and that's kind of the mindset that we keep when we're gearing up for meat season since we are in quarantine mode um it's a little different i nobody could have prepped for this we on, i can be honest like i don't know about anybody else i have no idea what i'm doing like yeah. <laughs> i'm kind of just winging it as we go and I remember like the first week that we were told like, okay, no more going out unless it's essential. Like that's it. I didn't do anything for like a week. Yeah. And working out outside of practice doesn't feel good because it's like, okay, my job is to move now. I'm going to move more. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so it was like the option of, of maintenance and running and weightlifting or whatever it was, it was not appealing at all. I just didn't want to do anything. So I didn't. And that was fine. And then about a week later, I was like, you know what? I miss doing something. Right. And that's where that are. And is that like, kind of where you okay, are right let's now? Run. Yeah, let's, let's put the rugs down and see what we can get done. And that's where that video came yeah. from. Sorry, I'm totally rambling. No, but yeah. but no, no we're all fascinated, though, because, you know, it, it's like, to think about how you have to adapt and, and that at any moment, like yeah. you can be on a path. All of this is relevant, whether, you know, you were going to the Olympics or you just, you know, you went to the same job every day and now your kids are home. Like whatever the situation yeah. is, I think going from, you know, being in a routine and, and being in your purpose, because like when I see you, Lori, that's yeah. the thing is it's like, you know, you're, you're a young person who's like actually living fully in their purpose. And mm -hmm. for that to get kind of interrupted, because it's not, it's not, it, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's just on pause for a moment. Yeah. Um, I think that yeah. really then causes us to rely on our other tools. And one thing I know I saw in your bio that you work with, uh, that you're an ambassador for I Don't Mind. And kind of yeah. researching and, and seeing a little bit of, about that and, and, you know, I would you call yourself like a mental health advocate or like yeah. absolutely yeah absolutely my mom is a social worker my sister is a therapist she has her own private practice um so that kind of let's talk about your sure. feelings has come since I came out of the womb um and then also like I I grew up with both sides of like let's break it down let's talk about it and then I grew up with my dad being like just go for it yeah oh, like full sin like and and that was so important because there's sometimes where I'm just feeling a lot and I have to figure out what compartment I'm going to pull from that day and see what works best right. for me. And some days I have to just like close my eyes and go for it. And some days I have to sit back and go, okay, why am I freaking out? Because I just fell on a routine. It's right. practice like, and pulling it apart. So yeah, I would definitely say I'm a mental health advocate. I think that's so important. And, and I imagine like when you're out there, so much of it yeah. has to be mental. You know, and, and so, like, what do you do to calm your nerves? Like, do you still get nervous when you're out there? Or is it something that, like, does your mind go blank and you just kind of only see what's in front of you?
like I'm nervous because I literally break mm. out to sweats. Like I can, everything can be calm on the outside. And then I'm like, oh my God, my shirt yeah. is soaking wet right now. I must be nervous. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I go completely cold. <gasps> my hands get cold. I, I can't move. Like my, t like competing, especially on like balance beam is the worst for me because I need to be able to feel the beam under sure. my feet and feel like my hands. Um, and when I, if I get that nervous, my whole body turns into ice and I have to somehow just salute the judge and like break out of it with every skill that I'm doing. So a lot of my routines, um, I don't know, on YouTube or wherever, they actually, sometimes they get, I guess, I guess a little bit better as the routine goes on because I'm starting to warm oh, up. Oh, it makes sense. Um, but when I was at the Olympics, I, I heart in my ears and everybody's different Did you say you um, hear your my hands get really ear? cold yeah I can hear my heartbeat like pulsing right here and wow. uh, I yeah that's really uncomfortable <laughs> and, and also like sometimes I get sensory overload and things feel like it's too loud I and then of course mm. I can tell that I'm too cold and it just that's that little peak moment of like okay a lot is happening right now I have to not shut it down but acknowledge it and, and feel it yeah because if I deny that feeling and if I say okay I'm not nervous it gets worse and then that it's happened before where I just was nervous and I was like okay you're not nervous you're fine you're fine ignore it you're confident you're gonna good and in my mind I was still doubting myself and I'd hop up and I fall because here wasn't good physically I was ready but here wasn't good so I've learned what's best for me is going up I have to breathe it, someone told me that when you get in the oxygen back in your brain and within a couple minutes your brain will send a signal to your body saying hey I'm okay you don't need to freak out we're gonna be fine um, so breathing is the biggest one. And then also talking to myself is important because I wish, I wish right before I'm competing, you know, it's just you and the equipment and then it's judges staring at you, getting ready to judge what you're about right. to do. And that feels like a lot of pressure. So talking to myself and saying, Hey, you're actually going to be fine. and believing it. Even if I'm nervous, believing it's like going to be you're going to be okay. You can do it. Like, at the end of the day, no matter what, you have felt this feeling before. I know you don't like this feeling, but you feel it. And that's. for people to know that no you will be afraid you you might be very afraid and you have to learn how to transmute that energy and know what you need at any given time and on some days like yeah. you said it might be to literally just close your eyes and go and, and trust that your body knows what to do other days it might be to literally talk yourself off the ledge or out of you know or out of your releases and at some point like also if you fall it's a big punch in the ego because it's like you're not just falling like you're full on at this height and then your belly flopping onto the floor and the whole gym uh. can hear it because it's it's you know and it doesn't hurt if you land properly but it's just kind of like this sucks and I remember there was one where I just landed and I just didn't move and was full on crying and my coach was like take a deep breath and go outside it's okay like you're good and at some point she was like listen you're really riled up right now. We're not going to yell at you. It's practice. You're going to be okay. I don't think you're in the right mind to finish the rest of the workout. I think what could really benefit you today is to go home and relax. And then we'll just try it again tomorrow. And they sent me home, which I was not used yeah. to at all. I mean, I I was just expecting kind of more of like, a, all right, suck right. It up, you're fine. But yeah. instead it was like, listen, we've watched you for the last year. We know that when you get like this, you can't function. It doesn't help anybody. So go home. And I was like, wow. Okay. And the next day was wow. good.
because I just needed a break. Yeah, I don't think I, <laughs> I literally yeah, just needed a break. You know, we try to push ourselves through, and that's not what we need at all. It's you saying that reminded me that we have a shared experience. We have several shared experiences, but um, oh yeah, Dancing with the Stars. I was on season three of Dancing with the Stars, and you won your season. Yes. What season were you on? I was, uh, I think it was season 20. Oh my gosh. Wow. 20 seasons later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember that was, I had that same experience where my uh, dance partner, Louis Van Amstel, so he, would, he would not let me rehearse on Mondays. Like we would go live on Tuesday. And oh, wow. he was, I was such yeah. an overachiever and I just like, was so focused and he would say no he would make me go home early go to the spa call your mom he said you can't you can't come from this place you have to allow yourself to he would say go to nothing so that you can have everything like let your mind go empty mm. let your body He, like right before we would go on, he wouldn't let me like run it in my head and go over and over and over again. He's like, you know it, it's in you, it's in your body. So, you know, it, it's great to hear. So I have a question yeah. for you. Cause like this would happen for me competing on dancing or just competing in general, um, right before I go. And this is like, especially on floor. Cause I, I'm very open about being nervous before competitions, being nervous right before I hop onto the equipment. And then a lot of people will go, well, then, like, why do you? next thing I know like I hear my music turn on and suddenly I'm like okay my job right now is to get all of you to look at me and to get all of you invested in what I'm doing and I want to have such a good time that you are having a good time too like that's it it's it's a complete brain switch and I was wondering if like when you're on dancing or if you're motivational speaking or whatever it might be do you get that feeling of like okay that's not me anymore Absolutely. I don't know what words came out of my mouth. I don't know. And I just hope for the best. And that's how you know it was good. That's, you're, that's yeah, the focus you're just tunnel. like in it. You're really, yeah, that's that's so cool. You know, I, I feel like in another life, I, I consider myself somewhat of an athlete. Like, a, a, oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. It, Here's my thing. I, I'm a big believer. You are still an athlete in some way, shape, or form. There is something out there that you are incredible at, and you don't know because you haven't tried it. And there's something that you can do that I can't because I haven't tried it either. True. Like, and encouraging people to, like, of, of course, encouraging people to move and having that freedom in movement, that's so important. But make it fun. What, what do you like? Yeah. You don't have to always just go to the gym and, and do the workouts that maybe make you feel bored. Find something that makes you you. And, and I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm a big believer. And, you know, even to think of, of how you treat yourself, you know, that if you, if you mistreat yourself, that's not going to get you there any faster and yeah. it's not going to help you to stay there. It's actually ultimately going to hurt you. Um, so to know that, that self-care actually has to kind of fit inside of this as well. It's everywhere. Yeah. That's like...
That's it. That's it. Like, whereas maybe you don't have all the stamina. Maybe you don't have all the physical. Maybe it's raining out. But if here you're connected and you can you can connect to what you're about to do, you can still do yeah. it. So it kind of shows that, like, that mental aspect is everything. And to say you're an athlete of impact, that feels very, very true and very honest. I mean, that's, like, that... that yeah, that... Re- I don't know how to explain that. That is a big badge. In New Jersey right now, uh, this year, she just weeks ago was actually training to go to the Olympics, which had now been postponed to next year. And we are talking about her Olympic mindset, being an advocate for mental health, and just really how we can stay balanced and motivated and what some of the gifts are, you know, in this time. This is my first interview on the the instagrams that i'm have a guest so i'm gonna push the button here and see what (laughs) happens okay this is great let's see mostly we have fans right now but oh wait here we go well until more questions come in i do have a oh okay there we go i was gonna say i have a question oh Oh, you deserve to see that people love you (laughs) (laughs) that's so sweet let's see who else is up here oh oh my heart oh there's another gymnast that just just wants to love on you everybody just wants just love just loving on just loving on you but yeah so if you guys want to ask some questions i don't know how you do that but when you do it it pops a little button up here and then i get to like there's like a little a little question mark thingy i think oh here you go they have little questions to the comments oh, yes. too oh this is great this is great okay what keeps your energy up when you're feeling low mm-hmm. Did you see the movie Inside Out, by the way? I did. Yeah, see no, Inside my husband, Out. when sadness came, wh- we were in the middle of the theater. He squeezed my knee and he was like, I understand you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because everyone would think that I'd be joy, but I'm actually sadness and Eeyore. Like, I just, oh, there's just like a little joy. I mean, yeah, but I I guess going back to the question, like, getting moving is really important. And then sometimes I still don't feel like moving. So if that's the case, then, like, turning to anything art form, music, watching movies and TV shows. Um, If I'm up for baking, Baking? usually I'll end up burning the kitchen down. What, girl? Yeah. I can't can't bake that well. I made an apple pie. It came out really bad, but I made it. And that's that is what, what matters. matters. That is that is what matters. I love it. Somebody in the comments <laughs> said they're kind of a little sad. It's kind of true.
depending on how we do, you know. Um, I haven't competed w with the coaches that I have now because moving ended up just me going to a completely different gym. But training in New Jersey um, and competing, and it really depended what kind of routine we hit. If it was a good routine, then, you know, of course. That's, what that's I wonder, like a foundation. Like, I, I definitely, I subscribe to a pity party every now and then. And like when I, when I, when things are, when I'm feeling successful, I like to feel more successful. So when I'm doing great, I yeah. just stay on. I want but more. I, I'm a big success junkie. If you couldn't <laughs> tell but like when something goes right, I want more yes. things to go right. And so I'm going to add a lot more on my right. plate. I do the same thing. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm buried under all the things and that I am wanting to do. And now it's too many things. And, I'm and then it leads to a big breakdown, at yes. least for me. And then it leads to me reevaluating my priorities. <laughs> and then we start from square one again. And then that leads to me being successful, which leads to me wanting more. You know, it's just. Absolutely. <laughs> so do you just practice the tools, talk yourself, talk to yourself, go through the process? Like, how do you, like, push yourself to show up for yourself um, in those times? Yeah. Um, that's a good question because, like, younger me handled things very oh. different than, I guess, me now would yeah. handle things. Um, I feel like I'm a lot more empathetic to the things that I'm feeling and how I react that's to things cool. now. Um, whereas before it was more of, I don't understand why I did that. That wasn't supposed to happen. I didn't bank on that happening. Now mm. what? And then it was full, like, freak out mode. So, you know, I think the me now really started around 2016, which came just right. in time. Just in time. Um, Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> ah, was 15, um, 16? I, earlier, yeah, I turned you 16. You but your wife um was. but it happened yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> what can i say <laughs> um i i did a competition i we started on vault vault was fine went to bars fell on bars and it was an international meet and you know and international meets are stressful because i'm not repping the gym that i train at i'm repping the country <laughs> that's not stressful um <laughs> you know you got to look down and instead of looking down and seeing you know just a wrist you see the american flag and that's that can be really <laughs> stressful i can imagine um but i was um i was doing a skill on bars and i fell and i remember feeling really disappointed that i fell and then usually when you, you rotate events they chime the arena like they make a noise and then you all get into single file and then you walk in a line everyone does their 30 second touch which you get 30 seconds to warm up and then you cold routine it and you compete and that's that um and i remember feeling upset and then the chime hit Because there's no room for that right now. Right now, what I can do, and it was, it was kind of like, um, you know, if you can't control it, don't. And if you can control it, full <laughs> reins, baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I can't control the fact that I just fell. That, that really sucks. But what I can control is the fact that I know that I love competing beam. I know that I feel stressful, but I want to hit a good yeah. beam routine. And so in that moment, I was like, okay, I'm going to forget. I'm going to tell myself that bars went really well. I'm going to tell myself that I hit, I hit a nice routine. The meet is going smoothly. The pressure is off and I'm just here to have a good time. And I ended up finishing the meet and coming out, I think still in third, which wow. is, is <laughs> with a fall, it's not, not too all. bad. <laughs> that really shows the power of the mind that if you allow yeah. yourself to slow and I did the first skill and I fell and then I got nervous and I was so rattled 
that I ended up falling again on the same event and then went right. to beam, proceeded to fall twice, and then went to floor, proceeded to fall twice. Right. And then <laughs> like like it was just a never ending loop because I, I got so spooked that I decided to take the spook and carry it with me because I didn't yeah. know where to put it. Man. So it uh, happens. I'm gonna ask you some more questions from here, but then I have a a personal question for you. Oh here, this is a fun one. Just what's your favorite color? Oh, um, it changes on the daily. I am a person that can't make decisions, but we're going to go with yellow. Oh, for I today. love that. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let's just keep it light for a moment. Favorite breakfast? Favorite breakfast would have to be... Oh, breakfast is, like, my favorite okay. meal. Mm. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a lover of, like, okay. pancakes. You can't go wrong with pancakes. question for you when you're in training what does your diet look like <laughs> not pancakes <laughs> um okay so i i used to be really strict with what okay. i was eating um especially when i was younger and i am not <laughs> that anymore it's more of like before i was really neurotic about it and i this is what it's for I have to do it and I was neurotic about it but I didn't enjoy it at all whereas now it's there's no specific diet okay. there's no um there's there's no like boundaries it's just eating clean okay. like I know that I'm small I know that I'm five one uh but I'm an athlete and a girl's <laughs> gotta eat and not right. like because uh there would be times where we'd go to meets and they're like, okay, no carbs. And I was like, what are you talking right. about? Like, I, I need fuel. Like, and I think that was something that I was, I was worried about when yeah. I was younger. And now it's like, there's no reason to be worried about the, dude. You're living life. If you want to have a slice of bread or two, you, you have, to, have yeah. a slice of bread or two. And if you want to have that cookie in the corner, go have that cookie in the corner. Try not to have 10 like you did when you were six, but go have that cookie right. in the corner. That's really helpful to know. Just enjoy yourself. Eat in your fingertips um so when you're in a handstand uh and you're upside down the weight shouldn't be in the front of your palm because if it's here you're gonna keep falling the wrong way but also if you keep falling the opposite way it shows that when your hands are down you're not using your fingers to grab the floor and that should be like your little i'm not quite sure how to explain it that's like your your guard <laughs> If you fall one way, you can use your fingertips. And then if you start to fall the other way, if you roll your hands back, you'll, you'll balance back. It's like a little seesaw, but your hands are the base of it. So if you're not focused on your hands and your fingertips, chances are you won't hold it. Yeah, we learned something. skill Oof. my favorite gymnastic skill would have to be one it's called a rickna basically um you start with a base skill so you learn these when you're a little bit younger and my personal base skill because i couldn't do anything else when i was younger which is fun um <laughs> it's called a stalder basically you straddle and you sit under the bar and then you come back Ooh. up now a rickna has the base of a stalder so you're straddling under the bar, but then when you come up and your feet close together and you're upside down, you're now going to let go of the bar and straddle through and catch. And I, that's learning it. <laughs> but then finally catching it, there's something really neat about doing something extremely hard and being in the air and like knowing where you are and knowing where the bar is. And knowing that it's going to be wow. a good one. That feels good. And that, that skill makes me feel good. I love that. So. Let's see.
I usually react two types of ways when I'm frustrated <laughs> that I've noticed. The first one being um, sometimes I'll go to practice and I, I can't get a skill. And sometimes I'll just kind of like stand and cry in the corner yeah. because it happens and I'm frustrated. Um, and I've also learned that if I try to just suck back in the tears and not feel it, um, it will linger longer. And also if I'm that emotional, then I can't focus on what I'm doing. So sometimes you just got to go and let it out. And then the other one is, is being angry about it. And that does happen. When that happens, I usually have to like physically remove myself from wherever mm -hmm. I Sometimes that's said as like a humble brag. Like, you know, I'm a perfectionist. Like, I'm a perfectionist, but it gets in the way. I think like, it's not gets like, in the way it's... of most people, though. Actually, I really do. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, yeah. it. People, we we want to think of it as a compliment, but in fact, it actually yeah. tends to hold us back because it's something that is actually not really attainable, and it's just an yeah. idea. And when we're trying to pursue it, we uh, often miss what's really important and whether. You know, yeah, yeah. right. Oof. Yeah, I mean, I felt that. Uh, yeah, it's like you, you're like, okay, well, if I can reach perfection, then that means I get to ditch any opinions around me, and I am here, and I've right. made it. But you never actually make it to that point. You're always gonna have something right. off. So appreciating what you're doing and and embracing in a in a softer yeah. way of how you can make it better is it's much better than just hammering down and being like no it has yeah. to be better because that's i'm still kind of like that and we're working on it but it gets yeah. in the way and if i do something my coaches will say like to the eye that looked beautiful and i'm like but when i was upside down it felt wrong and i'm right. angry about it and if it gets to that point they're kind of like okay you need to go somewhere else take a break get a sip of water it's not that big yeah. of a deal you're in practice you can try again and then at that point, I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, you're right. But it gets in the way sometimes. So it's either crying in the right. corner or leaving. <laughs> well, yeah, and then you just come back to it. Let's see. Yeah. Um, what? Oh, there's so many. We've got lots of questions now. Oh, this is a good Ooh. one. How do you handle burnout? Oh. Um, That's wow. a great question. And That's you, a really well, first good of question. all, do you feel like you, you have moments of burnout? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's think. I had one earlier this year, actually, where it was just, I mean, the sport is just extremely physically demanding. It's, you know, it's what I signed up for. Um, so there'll be times where my body is just exhausted and my brain is trying to figure out different variables of like how I can still keep it going. But if my body's sending me signals that it, it, things are getting a little bit too much and then I can kind of, it's like a, a cup full of running water. it'll take a, sometimes like up to a week to just get back into the swing of things. Um, so the best way for me to handle a burnout is communicating with the people around me. Um, Cause on top of, you know, at least when I was younger and I would still feel this way, but when I was younger, it was just gymnastics and homeschooling. Now it's gymnastics. People know who you are and you work outside of that. Um, it's not all you do. So sometimes when it gets too much, it's going to my team and saying, Hey, I need a second. We have to, we have to yeah. stop. Like, we have to take a second and they go, okay, like we've been here before, like, let us know when you're ready. And then coming to my coaches, Hey, this feels like a lot. And First of all, they can't help me if they don't know what's going on. And second of all, that doesn't help me because 
I know I'm well aware that I'm not capable of fixing it on my own, which is a big ego thing. For right, me. right, right. It's no my own. I don't, want any, I don't want to let anybody in. You know, I'm independent. <laughs> There's no pride in like, where's the pride in knowing that you can do it by yourself? Let, you know, it took a while, but at some point it was like, well, hey, you need to start letting yeah. people in. And as soon as I did that, the burnouts, the, the blowouts got wow. a lot better. Yeah, I think what I love so much about talking to you is like, so for those who don't know, Lori and I, we pretty much know each other through We Day. And We Day is this amazing event where thousands of kids come together who all have earned their way. And so this is like, you know, something that we're both very passionate about. And so when I see you there, we're, it's kind of like an even playing field. And then I go to your Instagram and like, I remember like who and what, like what you do with your body. And I think sometimes I forget that you're not a superhero, like, because you are to me, like, to <laughs> me, I'm like, if only like, you know, oh. I see you and I'm just like, wow, like to be able to do that, to, like you, you're defying gravity. You're just like, it's it's magical it's incredible out there but getting to talk to you is so cool because i remember that you're a person you're you know you're a girl who had a dream your butt off and who overcomes mental and emotional obstacles and who pushes themselves too hard and gets mad sometimes and whose body betrays them just like ours like you know sometimes for myself i i i'm like oh it's just if it's just the past it's behind me it's they're just I, a different yeah, kind of person. Just, just, <laughs> different cloth, and it's like no actually. And you have incredible people in your life that, you know, we've talked a lot about how important it is to take breaks. Like we haven't talked about you know overcoming and pushing and going further. We actually have talked more about pulling back and stopping and trusting and 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 not yeah. pushing and and feeling your feelings and getting back up and knowing that it's okay to like to take yeah. a break and to breathe for a second because also I noticed a lot and I think a lot of it has to do with social media and I had posted something actually how productive are you going to be with the time that you have off and I didn't see anybody saying anything around the lines of you're in a right. pandemic. The world, especially with someone with anxiety, yeah. feels like it's on fire. And now you want me to be productive knowing what's going right. on out there. No, I feel scared. And the thing that I'm used to doing has now just been stripped from me. I need a yeah. break. <laughs> I, you know what I need? I don't need to be productive. I need to like sleep and do yeah. nothing for yeah. a second. And we can you know, and so it was letting people yourself and, and that's, yes. that's the thing is it's like, there's this, there's this, I think, separation that's now happening between who we are and what we do that we, that, yeah. And, and when we sort of aspire to certain things, we have to ask ourselves, do I want that? Because it's going to. or we're going for something we don't get there we think that we have somehow yeah. failed as a human not at whatever yeah. we we're attempting to do and yeah so it's really beautiful like your, yeah I humanity mean, just like stripped back and to go wow like you know you are a beautiful person and one of the beautiful things that you do happens to happen on you know in the, in the sky like <laughs> on your toes <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah it was like you know as soon as as quarantine and everything hit it's almost like a big part of it felt like the world took away a large chunk of something that I was doing moved it to the side and said okay without this who are you like if you don't get to do this one thing who are you you're still you yeah. You, just, and, and, you don't get to do to this right point, now. And that's, what you, you know, what would you say to that, Lori? Like, what do you value? What have you learned from this, this last? Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, you don't know what to look for in a child athlete. You don't know if they're going to be good or not. I mean, sometimes, you know, I feel like every mom thinks their kid is like super special, <laughs> you know, because yeah. Yeah. they're your moms. Um, but my mom and like talking to her now and looking back, she was like, I saw something in you. You were not going to stop until you got mm. what you wanted. And that's a lot of fun. happen yeah. you know yeah. what's, how are you gonna react so since day one she said look you're Lori and then there's gymnastics you are not Lori the gymnast you are Lori who just so happens to be a gymnast but as your mom I see you as much more mm -hmm. than that who who are you without it since I was little um and so that's that I've carried that since I went to the wow. Olympics. I mean, I've carried that everywhere. Um, and it's like, if I didn't have a good meet, that hurt because I wanted to do right. well, but it didn't break everything. And mm. that's and so I important. I mean, that's a big reason. Yeah, that's a big reason. Like, I don't have the rings tattooed on me. Not because I have anything against it. I think yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. I mean, so many Olympians have, have the Olympic rings because yeah. that's like, that's a badge of honor. And I... Like, there, there we go. go. Like, like <laughs> you're gonna make this good. I love that. I'm like, we're gonna put life into what yeah. happened. Like, <laughs> and not make it a branding uh, because, as we all can see, yeah. the world is has changed. It's continuing to change. We don't, you know. I have so much hope for what our future can be because I think that there was so many systemic yeah. issues that we were dealing with. And this time to slow down the time for our planet to get to breathe and to the skies to get to clear up there there actually are a lot of you know um positive things that are happening during this time as yeah. well it isn't all you know grim um but but yeah. we don't know what the world is going to look like when this is over but when you think about like the fullness of your life and everything that you're passionate about like can you share some other things that you feel like, oh, maybe you don't real you don't know that these are these are some of your other like passions or joys or or things that you want to accomplish in your life? Yeah. I mean You're you're already a kind of accomplished author. I do know that, right? You, <laughs> you have uh you have a children's book as well? Two books? Yeah, I have a children's book, um, and I, I have a book that was written to basically just explain and and kind of that story and we just updated it which was so much fun so cool. and, and we, it was basically kind of like okay here's what we're doing since you haven't seen me in yeah. four years um and in that book it's it's fun because like I get to talk about mental health and I get to talk about like going to ther therapy and I get to talk about just letting somebody in and that's the, it's such a different dynamic than where I was when we first mm, came out with that's it that's cool um I think another one just being is that a squirrel? That's a weird looking <laughs> squirrel. There's a squirrel on my window. Um Hi buddy. Okay, sorry. Um wow. <laughs> but uh another one would definitely have to be just like entertainment. Acting, yes. singing, dancing, Broadway. Oh my god, all yes, of it. Girl. I love you. We wanna see you. <sighs> Thank you. Since I was a little kid. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of doing gymnastics too. Something about performing, maybe the right before makes me feel like <laughs> throw up everywhere. But when I'm out there again, like that's, a, that's right. not me anymore. It feels like somebody else. So like, apparently I, when I used to do ballet, I don't remember this, but my mom said that we had our first dance recital and there were a couple hundred people in the crowd. 
and the curtains open and all of a sudden everybody just sat down and started crying and there's just me in the corner like doing the whole thing milking it up um and just being so excited to perform in front of everybody and I want to keep doing that you know even if it's not in athletic form like I find it so like, you know, and of course I think like storytelling is, is great. It's wonderful. But from just another point of view, that's so much fun. That's so much fun. I want, I love being somebody else and not like, yeah, not in a, just a, a harsh moral way. Like I now know who I am and I, Like, I just, I want it all. Like, I, and since I was little, I was like, there are no limits if you want to do this. And, and I think a lot of stress of going into 2020 was like, oh my God, I need to top 2016. Okay. And my mom was like, no, like, no, no, we're not trying to top anything. This is new. This is new. All of this is new. And that kind of got me excited for life after gymnastics. Like, all of this is new. You don't have to top anything. Yeah. Do it all. Oh, same here. Wait, before we go, I have yeah. one question. Okay. <clears throat> um. uh, <laughs> when was a moment where you felt most brave? That's a great... Because I've been talking about you me have a lot. Been. And all my brave okay. moments... Okay, Lori. Okay, but you're every time. Every time I talk to you, I get this like golden mm. nugget of info that I want to just carry forever. I so I want to, I want to hear okay, this. From you. Okay. Huh. So for me, my bravery is quiet. Mm. My bravery is not what I. knocked yeah. down and and I have been knocked down I've been knocked down a lot um and I think you know it's interesting because I, that's why I mean I I love you for so many reasons but one of them is that I know oh. I know that when I know that what we see is just a glimpse of who you are it's just the tip of the mm -hmm. iceberg and I know I've been I know how many moments I've been in where there's so much more going on than what you can see and how bright I'm shining in that moment and that the real bravery isn't the ability to look like everything's okay. It's when I can show you that I wasn't okay. That's, that's my... ...comes from, so, yeah. Ooh. yeah. You said my bravery is quiet. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's vulnerability, <laughs> real vulnerability. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and vulnerability doesn't always look like, you know, crying your butt off or, or it, sometimes vulnerability is just like, is letting people get close to, close to you. Like actually letting yeah. them in and saying like, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to let you close enough to hurt me. Yeah. That's, that's. Um, I actually, I just had.
terrified out of my wits end. My heart is racing just thinking about it. If I'm scared and if I'm thrown up in the corner and I'm freaking out, when the time comes physically, you can count on me to show up 100%. Now, emotionally, it, I resonate a lot with yeah. what you're talking about because usually that wouldn't be something that I would communicate with this person. I wouldn't, I don't want to tell someone that I'm scared of messing right. something up, but I sat there in front of this person and I was so nervous. I actually ended up like crying a little bit, which is very off brand. That's actually very on brand. For me, never mind. <laughs> but I know but... <laughs> you, you want to like suck them back in. You're like, this is not the reaction that I was hoping to have right now. I was like, I was like, no, 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 you can't. And it's, it's just, and they were like, something's off. You've been odd for the last couple of days. And I said, yeah, because I'm, I'm scared of messing things up. That's my biggest wow. fear. I don't want to do something wrong. And they just like, that was a giant stepping stone in our relationship and like in us talking, but I felt more brave in that moment than like hopping up for Olympic trials wow. and, and competing one of the routines. Maybe not beam. That was sure. Scary. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's some events where it's like that yeah that's scary but I know how to yeah. do that I you train I'm trained to that. be uncomfortable I am trained to be uncomfortable yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to pre-plan this. I'm not going to to make every scenario up in my head. I know I have whole monologues with myself <laughs> before having conversations yeah. with people. And, you know, like, I love I love the idea that all bravery isn't, it can't be seen. That that by the time mm -hmm. you are, are actually seen, step up to the beam the shaky step like that yeah. moment we trans when we're in it we, we we're transcendent i feel like there's a, there's like a moment uh between and and it can definitely be titled as bravery i think that's what i've always capped it to be but that moment equipment there's some odd transfer of like trust mm -hmm. that happens from like one part of me to another i'm not quite sure how to explain it but that trust in like it, it's it's like a trust in future me to take the reins and know that future me is responsible enough to make sure that i'm doing yeah. my best so now i can sit back and relax and close my eyes and go okay being a perfectionist is not going to change what happens within the next five yeah. minutes. It's not going to do anything. If anything, it's going to stress you out. So take a deep breath and, and trust that transfer, you know, like trust future you to do yeah. the right thing. And that has helped immensely with being under pressure, competition or not. It's knowing like at the end of the day, fundamentally, I want to yeah. do the right thing. Oh my God. I want to hit a good routine. I want to be a yeah. good person. I want to tell you the truth. I want to show up. I want to do all those things. And it's like, that's all those things that I just listed are like the foundation of why I always get so yeah. anxious. And it's well, knowing you like, don't know what you're going to be to, to break you it. Don't know yeah. what you don't uh, this book that I had called oneness, there was a quote that said, you are all that you're yet to become. So mm. meaning that like at six years old, you were the Lori that you are today at six, because inside of that Lori was the potential for all that you were going to blossom into. And so I think when you are standing yeah. on that beam, you are meeting a, a version of yourself that all, already always existed. and that all you have to do is to show up and to 
like extend yeah. that hand towards yourself and say, I've got you. I've got you. I've done it. Yeah. Done everything. Well, that's like in, and this is, oh, again, very unbrand for me. When I saw Frozen <laughs> 2 and they were, have you seen I Frozen 2? Please yet. tell me. I know, I know, I know. I no okay well there's a scene i won't spoil it there's a scene where like else is doing something and i have an older sister and so anything sister related Ever since hearing that, like from literally what you just said, but I know. Oh God. I about it. it makes me want to cry. But that feeling of like I, I take a lot of pride in knowing that younger me would be very proud. Yes. She waited for someone like this yes. to come along, and I'm not perfect. I got a lot of work that needs to be done. I don't know everything, but there's a place that I think if she could grab onto future me and, and see what's happening, I think she would be oh, proud. And to me, fact. that matters more than anything. Absolutely. I know that for, for an actual fact. I mean, you know, we, as achievers and, and overachievers at times, you know, we, we put our goals in front of ourselves and we, you know, we are going for gold. Like we are going for all yeah. of the way, the one of the one, you know, and I think sometimes yeah. we forget that there was a point where we just wanted to be able to stand up there and we just wanted to be able to yeah. jump and then we wanted to be able to leap. And we, and every single one of those goals, uh, we, we just tack, we've tackled them and we sometimes, yeah. we became the people that we needed when exactly. we were younger, you know, exactly. And, and that, you know, for anyone who's watching, you know, this time, the series is called stay motivated, but it's not meant to be, uh, it's not meant to push you anywhere you don't want to go. It's just a meant to be conversations about where we are. And some days we feel like, you know, taking on the world and other days we don't know what we're really, what we're going to do with that. Usually we're passing each other in the hallway, seeing each other. I'm like stuffing bread in my mouth oh, no, before they just shove a mic over, you know? <laughs> oh, do you need me? <laughs> Hand me my microphone. Let's go on stage. Um, but, you know, yeah, I think in this world of social media, we spend so much time only with the ideas of one another. And we look up to each other and we're like, man, look at these amazing things that you've done. Um, I know that you know that we're rooting for you, but I, not just as as an athlete, but just as a human. You're such a bright, beautiful, sp just spirit. And every time you talk and and show up, it's just like, man, whatever you choose to do, it, it you're gonna be. You are successful, and you will continue to be successful. So, yeah. Aww. Thank you so I much. I love you, girl. <laughs> I love this you. This is too. so cool. And you just, yeah, you keep doing you and, and, and sharing your journey with us wherever you, like, as you progress. And yeah, well, I, I, I.
so I'm a, I'm, you know, I got this young face, but I'm a little older lady. And so, like, <laughs> like, you get out of here. <laughs> like, this way, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, what's this even going to be like? And, and I, and I like know you well enough that it was like, I don't really need to like research Lori. Like I would like a guest, but you know, and, and, and it's just so, <laughs> it's crazy, like an hour ago or however long ago, um, to be like scared and and then for us to have this conversation of your day you too. Will... Thank you so much again. This is wonderful. I feel so whole. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> you, I'm glad that you do. And yeah, you just, you keep doing, you keep enjoying your family, keep, you know, sharing your journey. And yeah, we'll talk soon. Sounds All right. good. Stay safe right. out there. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, you guys, how amazing is Lori? Like, seriously such a sweet and beautiful and beautiful soul um i'm so glad that we did this uh quarantine has been you know just an interesting time where we have more time to kind of explore things and to see what we, where we are i am very shy about being this forward facing i know that seems strange being an actor but it's true um i get really weird about talking um, but I know that I have some incredible people in my life that are doing amazing things. And I just am going to try to open myself up to being a little bit braver and tackling some of my goals and fears. And this is one of them. So as of now, I think I'll be back uh, every Monday around this time. I'll put up a flyer by that time. And, you know, if you guys want to leave comments or go on my um, page and just let me know people that you might want to hear from uh, that could help us to stay motivated during these uncertain times. So anyway, thank you all for being here. I love you. I uh, wish you continued health and I'm sending love and light and prayers to everyone in your family. Um, stay safe, stay positive, and be well. Talk to you soon.